I get so many questions about retinols and what form to use, what's the difference between retinol, retin-A. It can be so confusing. And since it's been touted as the holy grail of all sort of over-the-counter, readily available skincare products, let's break it down for you. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Christine Beyer here, licensed esthetician for 22 years and on this channel we talk about your skincare journey because as you know it's never one thing we do with our face that makes it look great it's a combination of things including massage and devices and high performance products of course so retinol how is it different from retin-a a lot of people say you know well, retinol it's the whole, whole retin-a it's the holy grail right and while this may be true for some some skin types it's not true for all and i've seen women over the years sort of abuse their skin, tame it to tolerate retinol. And I look at their skin, it just does, does not look good to me. It looks dry. And you know, part of the aging process is we lose natural moisturizing factor of our skin, our natural hyaluronic acid declines. And so why would I wanna put something on my skin every day and try to beat it into submission with something that's drying it out? Counterintuitive to me. So. Vitamin A is important, but do we all need to bludgeon our skin with that much Retin-A? No, you can get a retinol and stay on it and be fine. So you've got your vitamin A and you're fine. Now, if you have grade four acne, grade two, three, four acne, maybe you wanna be on retinol, different, you know, that's an over-the-counter version. But most of us, I think, unless you're a big sun worshiper, need i think a good old retinol is fine and let me show you the different forms of retinol so first of all and you'll see this in a lot of cheaper brands um, they use retinol esters right and then retinol esters are converted into retinol and then once they convert into retinol the body has its own enzymes its skin your skin has its own enzymes and that converts retinol into retinaldehyde retinaldehyde is also called retinal a l at the end so it's super confusing so i can understand how this is like just this vitamin a soup in our minds right they're they're all retinoids and then we have retin a retinoic acid right which is the strongest form and then we go down from there now once we reach retinaldehyde then the body converts it into retinoic acid you know that's what we want but a lot of times the skin just can't acclimate that fast right so if you've been using retinol products for a long time and you want to bump up fine you know do so see how your skin does but if it's constantly looking dry and you've got dry patches and I, I just see a lot of YouTubers that do this and I'm like, you could just pull back a little bit on the retinol use and add some extra hydration and some antioxidants and your skin will look rocking every day because I don't understand this concept of torturing our skin to make it look better. And let me tell you a story. <laughs> I love these stories, right? I had first become an esthetician. I was living on Miami Beach, on South Beach, if you can believe it. And I was going to the movies and I was on the escalator. And I noticed this guy in front of me and I, I recognized him from the trade bags. It was Dr. Well, they call him the King of Botox. And he had an office down in Coral Gables and in New York City. And his name was Dr. Frederick, Frederick Brandt. I recognized him. I was behind him on the escalator and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I wanna to talk to him. I recognize him from the trade magazines that I read and I was so excited. And he must have felt me boring a hole into the back of his head, <laughs> staring at him. Cause he turned around and he looked at me with like the most opaque, weird, dry, sandy looking skin I mean, it had no blemishes, it was completely white, but it looked completely lifeless, like paper. And he had no expression. So this is what, back then, that's all we had, Botox and Retin-A. That was it. You know, it's some glycolic, 
But that was it. You know, this whole skincare scene has just exploded in the last five, 10 years. But back then we had scant stuff to do our magic with. And I just remember being shocked by the quality of his skin. And I was like, I was so shocked I couldn't introduce myself. <laughs> Not that I was like super, I was kind of shy back then. I guess I still am, but I, I just, I just didn't have words, right? So let's not fall into that trap. Now, may he rest in peace. And at, he was one of the great practitioners of Botox on the forefront of, of, of skincare back in the day. And I wanna honor him for that, but let's not beat our skin into submission with too high of a retinol or retin-A thinking that we're anti-aging because it's not always the case, right? Sometimes it's just too much for the skin. And then you add a new product and poof, you know, you get all these zits or the skin just revolts, you know, it's like no way. So a lot of people will result to retinaldehyde, but you can still have that same problem, the adjustment. But I think this has been talked about quite a bit on YouTube. And so let me tell you my solution. If I have somebody who has really oily skin, a lot of acne, that thing, then I will say, you know, let's get you on different, let's try something a little stronger. But I can also tell you that even an over-the-counter organic product, like, I can't even remember what we were using in a spa. I was working at the Woodhouse Arcona. It was like a vitamin A serum. And I put a gal on that, and I remember I saw her a week later and could not believe how good her skin looked because, you know, vitamin A, it sweeps out our pores, it, it, it clarifies the skin, it makes us less oily, it makes our pore size look smaller. I mean, it just does so many beautiful things for the skin, right? It thickens it up, it helps with brown spots. Really, you know, it's a powerhouse, but it can also be misused and abused as with the Frederick Brandt, Dr. Brandt, right? I just, I don't think his skin looked good at all. It looked lifeless to me. So let's not have lifeless skin. You can try these stronger forms, but if they're just too much, think about putting more vitamin C or um, antioxidants, something that's you know gentle to temper that. And if you just don't know what to try, I, uh, I've been selling this for a couple years and I keep upgrading the product. It's called Sleep On It Retinol. This is a vegan formula. It has the highest amount of OTC retinol available. It is encapsulated retinol, so it's released uh, deeply into the skin and not all at once. So it tends to be a lot more tolerable. And a lot of people don't even know how to use retinol correctly. You're basically gonna put a pea-sized amount, just a pea-sized amount. So really, that's about all you need for your face and a lot of people don't put this on their neck but this one I find I can put on my neck and I like to rub it between my fingers and then I will apply it I actually apply it over a few serums and so I just put like the little whiff underneath my eyes and, and then I will actually take a towel and blot my eyes because if you ever get retinol in your eyes it's oh, the worst so I will just put that on and then I will wait a second sometimes I feel the activity of it sometimes I don't and I will put on my next layer, right? And since this is, is encapsul encapsulated, it gets through all the layers of gunk you have on your skin and it still works. Uh, but if you wanted like pure benefits of the retinol, it would be, this is a great formula because it is so tempered with antioxidants. I mean, this has aloe vera and so two different types of hyaluronic acid, retinol moist, and then the liposomal retinol niacinamide, white skin ascutin, which is just another form of skin brightening, beta glucan from mushrooms, allantoin, plant stem cells. So this has a lot of fortifying skin soothing ingredients that help the skin take in the retinol and use it to the maximum capacity without the flakiness and the redness and the dryness that happens with normal retinol. So that's really the difference. Like if you look at Rock's formula, you know, it may be half price, but it's mixed with dimethicone and it's basically delivered in sort of a, a slippery formula and fine, but dimethicone's not really an antioxidant. You know, it's just a sort of a 
emulsifier and uh, makes things creamy, right? And, and it causes acne for a lot of people. So I don't think I would use, I don't know, just look at the formula deep, give it a close look because it's really important that your retinol formula has a bunch of antioxidants around it so that you can absorb that without the irritation and your skin acclimates fast. I mean, this guy, oh, let me tell you some other stuff. Colloidal silver, calendula extract or organic calendula, rose flower extract, L-carnosine, liposomal encapsulated vitamin A, B3, B5, C and E, butterfly pea, butterfly pea powder, rose essential oil, another form of mushroom that is a preservative and antioxidant, natural preservatives, EcoCert potassium, sorbate and sodium benzoate, which are organically sourced, more natural skincare approved preservatives. If you wanna keep it simple and just have a good retinol in a form that's delivered, you know, via liposomes, um, encapsulated so that it's not gonna torture your skin while you acclimate to it. Now, this is something that says, try it three times a week to start and then you can move up. However, I've noticed this is a formula my sensitive skin can just start using and I don't have any bad side effects. Um, I, I really, my skin just looks great. Whereas on other stronger, you know, like image skincare, my God, they have some beautiful formulas, but my skin would just blow up on that. I mean, I would look good for maybe a half a day and then I would look like this dry, hard skin, withering mess and my face would be red too. And I was like, well, this is not what I expected. <laughs> so if you wanna just press go, use a retinol that makes you look good, that you acclimate too fast, this is your gal <laughs> or guy. Um, the Sleep On It Retinol. And make sure you are on a retinol. And I just think that this is one of the things that is imperative in a skincare routine. Um, but don't torture yourself with it. And if you haven't find the right, found the right one yet, take heart. There are really good formulas out there and the formulas are getting smarter and better every day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.